What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for watching. Today's going to be a little bit of a shorter video, but I'm going to explain why I'm doing all of this back here. up everybody welcome back thank you guys for watching if you are a first time watcher I encourage you guys to go back and check out my other two videos that I've done this is my third video and today I'm going to kind of be talking about everything that I'm doing with this Jeep my intentions with the build um, some of the problems that I've had why I'm fixing what I'm fixing and uh, basically my overall plans and goals for this Jeep so right off the bat, um, I want to cover the issues that I've had because I've got a lot of questions on why I'm doing what I'm doing and what I'm going to be doing to fix those. So old body is off the Jeep. It's sitting behind me here and I'm swapping it with a, a fresh tub that I've coated with steel it. You guys saw the last video. If you haven't, go back and watch that and check out the new body that's going on the Jeep. So the issues that I had um, really stemmed from a uh, lack of knowledge and me not knowing what I was doing as I was building the Jeep the first time. So I basically learned how to do everything that I did to that Jeep as I was doing it. So yeah, I, I did a couple things two and three times to try to get it right. And I think the Jeep came out great and it suited me for a long time. Um, it did really well. It looked great. And uh, overall, I was really happy with it, but um, as a very novice uh, fabricator um, and welder and all around learning how to build a Jeep, um, the, the quality showed. So it looked great, but it did have some issues. And one of those big issues was the body lines. So when I decided to cut the rear of the tub out to try and make more room for coilovers and stuff like that into the body, um, basically squaring out the wheel wells. Um, when I did that, I did not account for the fact that when I cut the floor out, the body was going to move. Kind of sounds like a common sense thing, but at the time it was something that I overlooked. And um, basically the body shifted out on each side, so the body wasn't square. Uh, I had some alignment issues with, um, with some body parts and the armor wasn't quite lining up where it needed to sit perfectly it was it was on there and it looked good but um i wasn't quite happy with um overall how it how it turned out so another big issue that i had was because of that the tailgate actually had to be trimmed on each side to make it look square um it wasn't squared up um basically each each side had an angle cut on it that way it lined up with the body that was out of alignment. So one thing was off, everything ended up being thrown off. So another big problem that I want to address is the frame. The frame actually has a good amount of rust on the inside of it. The outside looks great, but the inside it's starting to fall apart piece by piece. I pulled out a ton of chunks out of that frame uh, this past week, and I'm glad that I'm doing some improvements and going to be replacing some things because that was uh, a big concern for me. So the body mounts on the Jeep are actually some that I custom made myself uh, a couple years ago. Uh, it's four inch channel with uh, I think it's eighth inch um, plating on the bottom to, to seal them up and they came out nice and they looked good at the time but like I said before I was learning how to do everything and what I could do now is a lot better than what I could do then. So with those I had a couple issues um, where they were put and um, none of them were identical so they were all off just a little bit which doesn't help with making everything line up perfectly. So I had some fitment issues with my armor because of that. Um, 
The rock sliders didn't quite want to line up perfectly because most of them, they have a channel in them that slides over the body mount bolt. And those body mount bolts were not in the exact same places that were. So I ended up, um, I ended up making my own and, and they just did not line up. So with all the issues that I have with my frame, the best solution to those problems is to eliminate those problems entirely. By that, I mean I'm gonna replace the frame. Um, seems drastic, I know, but I've got a, a handful of issues and there's no real way to cost effectively handle each of those issues and, and stay within the budget that I want to. So what I'm gonna do is replace the entire frame and I'm starting at Moto Built. I am using a front half kit, their back half kit, and for the middle, I'm gonna use their brand new double triangulated four link system that just hit the market a couple weeks ago. That's gonna be my template to make a new center section of the frame. So I'm gonna use my own tubing. Um, that's not relatively inexpensive for tube. And I'm gonna buy, buy that and make the center piece that the front half and the back half kit are gonna to go to. So that's my plan for a frame. It's gonna eliminate all the old issues and I'll be able to make it perfect and it's gonna, it's gonna help me out. The biggest thing with the new frame is when I put this thing together, I'm gonna to be able to really take my time because I'm building it with no body on it. I'm just building it on a table. The biggest thing with that is that I'm gonna be able to take my time and weld it properly. With my old frame, I, like I said before, I was learning how to do everything. And when I did the back half kit, I had one of, it's my brother's old welder, and it's just an old, old miller. Didn't work great, um, and the quality of the welds was horrible. Um, it held together, thankfully. You know, I had enough, um, enough practice to, to make it hold together, which I'm thankful for. But also, I've got enough time lately to really practice my welding and. Hopefully, um, everything is gonna look a thousand times better. So I'll be able to put some proper welds on it and, and put some proper bracing in for it and really make a, a good frame. So those are the issues that I'm having and um, those are the two biggest things. The goals that I have for this Jeep, the uh, end result that I wanna end up with is a, a very comfortable, very quality built, um, TJ and I think Moto Build suspension kit is going to help. Um, I think all the parts that I'm going to be going to, which I'm, I'm fixing to lay out for you guys, that's going to help out tremendously. And the quality of my work is going to be able to, it's going to be a lot higher than it was when I was learning how to do it all. Now that I know how to do most of it, uh, it it's not second nature, but it's, it's a lot easier for me to, um, I'm a lot more comfortable with the work that I'm doing and it's not the first time I've ever done it. So the parts that I'm gonna be using for this build um, really started with the body. Um, I found the body used on Marketplace. I went and snagged it up and I, I have it how I want it. I think it's pretty much as perfect as I can get it and I'm very happy with it. I went about painting it the right way. Last time that I painted the Jeep with steel it I painted piece by piece and yeah I'm still painting piece by piece but I took the entire body and I prepped it um, I didn't I didn't skip any any steps with that I didn't cut any corners with that I painted it the right way and that was you know that goes along with my quality goal is to make everything as quality as I can so starting with the body um, that was a huge step Next is the frame. So Moto Builds kits, um, those are gonna help out a lot. It's gonna basically make me a brand new frame. So I'm gonna be doing those and I will be covering all of this stuff that I'm gonna be mentioning in most of their own videos. So Moto Builds frame, I'm gonna have an entire built, um, entire video on nothing but framework. So that's something you guys can look forward to. So moving on, um, another big part of this build are the axles. And as you can see, the Jeep is on the ground. Um, just the body, the frame is actually cut up into pieces already. It's cut up into, I think, three or four sections. Some that I'm gonna keep and some that I'm not, some that I'm gonna scrap, and some that I'm gonna use as a template for making my new frame. So 
it's cut up and it's out of the way. So um, everything else is gone. Um, I've got the motor here. I've got the body, the old body here, which is, is going to be going to my other shop uh, in a few days. And that's all I have for parts right now. So I'm starting from scratch, essentially, and making a new Jeep. But um, everything that I had before, uh, it got sold. Uh, I have a buddy. He lives over in Crystal River. He came and picked everything up one day. He's actually got a new, uh, YouTube channel uh, for his Jeep that he's going to be starting to build on here soon. And I'll put the link down below. His channel, if you guys go check it out, that would be awesome. So he came and he bought everything. He bought my coilovers, he bought my control arms, tires, wheels, axles, he bought everything. So with the exception of what I've got here, he bought it all. And he has a lot of the same goals that I did initially, was to build for 37s, and that's kind of his plan. So he took everything and ran, and uh, I've got a new budget for my build, and I'm kind of starting from scratch. So the Dana 44s are gone, and while I absolutely loved the way that they performed, they did everything that I needed them to, um, I am ready for one tons finally. And the biggest reason that I'm moving to tons was not because the 44s were not reliable. They were reliable. I only had one issue, uh, wheeling all over the country, um, wheeling some of the hardest trails that I've ever been on, I didn't have but one issue and that issue was covered under our warranty so it's not because they were not reliable the main reason i'm going to one tons is because a i want to go up a tire size i want to go to a 42 43 so that's one of the big reasons the other big reasons is every time i took that jeep out i felt like i was pushing it to its maximum limit and um, I was on that line of being in a spot that I shouldn't be in and probably breaking something, um, tr probably tearing something up uh, worse than I could fix. So because of that, um, with the 40s on there, I figured it's time. I'm going to go ahead and do it, and I'm going to build it. I'm going to build it big, and I'm going to build it strong, and it's going to hold up to some big tires. Um, I'm still running the factory drivetrain with the 4.0, so I'm not going to be pushing a ton of power. So I'm not too worried about um, uh, a one tons being damaged by power. So that's not really a concern. So my plan for axles, um, I've actually got a 14 bolt sitting right over on the on the bench over here. I've been working on it, so. Actually, the next video is going to be nothing but 14 volts, so you want to keep an eye out for that because I've got a lot of cool parts that are going on it, and it, it really looks pretty slick right now, um, the, the whole axis. So that's my rear. I've got, uh, so it's, it's a 14 bolt. It's one of the newer ribbed, uh, rib, ribbed castings, and I pretty much got all the work done to it other than the internals. I've got internals over there as well for it, um, but it's a, it's a 14 bolt. It's got the 30 spline enters, and I've got a grizzly locker for it. I've got 538s for it, um, and basically everything I need to run that. So that's my rear. And um, for the front, I've actually got a custom axle housing on order from TTR Axle in Missouri. He's building me a custom axle um, for my front, so I'm going to show that off a little later. So you'll have to wait and see what that is. So that's pretty much everything I have planned for my axles. Um, so the other thing that I got rid of was coilovers. Um, Paul bought everything from me and he also bought the coilovers. So coilovers are actually, they just showed up yesterday and I bought rock crawlers, uh, two and five eighths, um, solid body coilovers. They're all aluminum. The, the quality of those things is incredibly impressive. Um, I had the foxes before they treated me right. I never had an issue with them. They were a little stiff, but you know I could have had them tuned and, and they probably would have been fine, but the quality of these rock crawler coilovers that I've got sitting over there is fantastic. So I'm really happy to go to those. Um, I'm gonna run as much rock crawler stuff as I can because I love their quality. Um, everything they, they do is top notch. So I'm really happy with those. Those are all 14 inch coilovers. Um, so I'm gonna have a 14 front and rear it's not a 16 like I had before, but I think with the axles and the brackets and the mounting locations, um, I think they'll be just fine. 
So, um, moving on, I've also got uh, a new suspension design that I need to go with. With Motobuilt's kit, it is a double triangulated front and rear. So, basically, I'm going to be using rock crawlers, crawler joints like I had before. I had eight from my last kit, and I just bought eight more um, that are on the way. So, uh, Motobuilt's kit uses inch and a quarter joints on uppers and lowers. Um, so I'm, I'm basically going beef all the way around. Big joints and probably two and a half inch uh, aluminum arms, front and rear, upper and lower, all the way around. Um, I think it's going to be stout. I think it's going to work great. Uh, Motobelt does some awesome things and I'm really excited to test out their kit. So with my rock crawler coilovers and custom control arms and all their rock crawler joints, I think it's going to be an awesome suspension setup. Um, I'm not completely sold yet on full hydro. It's still up in the air, but it's still early on. I don't even have a frame built yet, so I'm trying to figure a few things out. So we'll see if that ends up happening or not. All right, so moving on to my roll cage. This cage is a poison spider cage, and it's got uh, a lot added in and taken out and uh, some custom work done to it, which it looks great. It's done me well. Um, it's helped me out. I put the Jeep on its side and, you know, it was sitting on the cage um, as well as the door. But the cage has held up great. It's done good for me. But I'm looking for something a little better. Um, there's only two cages on the market right now. And one of them is really expensive. And this one is a little outdated. So if I'm going to pay the money for a cage, I'm going to build something that... Um, Basically something that's gonna suit all of my needs and the quality is gonna be there and it's gonna it's gonna be everything that I want it to be. So I have a plan to build a new cage. Um, that's gonna be a little further down the line because I've got a lot of other stuff to do first, but it is in the books to build a cage. Um, this one, it's done good, but also when I did the rear stretch in the back um, uh, before Jeep Beach, I put the coilovers um, on the cage. I built them into the cage and I didn't add enough supporting and enough bracing and I didn't take my time planning out the cage thoroughly enough and uh, didn't design it enough to support that. So the cage actually has a couple of bends in it from the coilovers being mounted to them. But it's another issue that I've had that I'm trying to address and I think a custom cage is going to be top notch it's gonna it's gonna fix the problems and I'm looking forward to doing that. so moving right along wheels and tires are not the next big subject I want to move to a 42 43 and uh, the 14 bolt rear is gonna be good for all that it's gonna hold up to that the custom axle that I'm having built will definitely hold up to a 42 43 so I'm gonna be looking to probably go uh, up to that tire size. Um, I'm still gonna run Mickey Thompson's and still gonna run Dirty Life's. I absolutely love the setup that I was on before, but I need to go up. So that's my goal is to move up. And um, I'm also gonna be uh, increasing the wheelbase to somewhere in the 115 range. Uh, the rear is gonna come out a couple more inches uh, than, than what it was. And the front's definitely going to come out a little further. So um, that's something I'm really looking forward to. So that's another big thing there. Um, the 4.0 that I have in it is still going to, I'm still using it. I'm not switching to an LS. I'm not doing a diesel swap. not doing anything like that just yet. Um, I'm going to save that for down the road. I don't have the budget to do all that. I've got a lot of stuff that I'm already replacing. So... Um, that's pretty much eating up most of my entire budget, and um, so I'm not going to be looking to swap a motor anytime in the next little while. So that's something I have to look forward to, um, and that's pretty much it for my plan. Uh, I've got a lot of little things that I plan on doing, um, and I'm going to share those as I do them, but for the big things, the big ticket items that I know I've got a lot of questions about, uh, that's pretty much all of it that covers most of it um, I'm gonna try to do a lot of part install videos on this channel just for instance my next video is Motobuilt products for the 14 volt so 
Um, I'm going to cover one video with several products that Motobelt makes for the 14 bolt. Uh, I'm going to showcase those and show you how to install them and show you why you would want to install them. So I'm going to be doing that kind of video with uh, most of the new parts that I do. That way I've got a good, uh, a good documentation here uh, on YouTube. I've got something for you guys to learn from and follow on. Uh, and you can keep up with the Jeep, see everything that I'm doing, see how, see how it's turning out. Um, so I'm excited for it. It's going to be an awesome project. Um, last time it took me a little over, uh, took me about a year and a half to build the entire Jeep from um, factory axles on 35s with nothing done to it to where it is today. So um, my build time frame is looking like uh, the rest of 2022, which it's mid-late October right now, so I'm going to try to finish uh, a good chunk of it by the end of the year, and then next year uh, I'm going to try to have everything done before Jeep Beach, uh, done running, driving, um, doing some testing with everything by then. So April, May, it's going to be game time to be on the road, be on the trail, and, uh, and really starting to test this rig out. Um, so Rockstar has the Great American Crawl that we do. Um, I'm working with them to put on a few events here in the Southeast, and I'm gonna be managing those. So um, you're definitely gonna wanna come out and check the Jeep out there um, on those stops. Working on the schedule now, so um, definitely gonna need the Jeep ready by those events. So I think that pretty much covers everything that I wanted to show. Um, everything I wanted to go over, I've pretty much covered. I've got a lot of questions on why I'm doing some of the drastic changes that I'm making, and I pretty much covered all those reasons. If I didn't, comment below and I'll get back to you. As always, I'm on Instagram. You can message me there. I answer a lot of questions there. Um, also, if you have any constructive criticism on the YouTube channel, on the videos, on any of it, shoot me a comment let me know um, i want to improve these videos and i want to make them better uh, it's still a learning process and shout out goes to anybody that does these videos full time because it is a lot of work and i did not realize how much work is going to go into these videos so thank you guys uh, for those of you that are liking and sharing the videos and watching them uh, and continuing to follow so thank you guys uh, please give the video a like Please comment, please subscribe to the channel, and keep an eye out for the next video. So, see you guys next time.